topic for this session is input output or IO. We are having multiple different types of input and output devices are getting connected with the main processor with the main system. This input output devices mainly divided into two categories. One is a character oriented device, another one is a block oriented device. In case of character oriented device, the device is byte communicable. That means a single byte can be transferred, can be read, can be sent in between the device and the system. In case of block devices, the device will do the communication with a chunk of data in the form of a block. Mouse, printers, keyboards are the good example of byte communicable device or character oriented device and all the disks should be considered as a block oriented device. So to have a detailed discussion on this particular IO, I have drawn one block diagram, a typical PC bus structure. So here I have tried to show you that how the different devices are getting connected. Now this is my main processor, the CPU and this processor is having the cache memory connected obviously because processor will store its required and frequently required data or instruction in this particular cache memory. And with this particular main memory, it will be having one control unit and that is the bridge memory controller. And this particular data which will be coming to the memory may be coming from some IO devices. So that is why it is known as the PCI bus or it is also known as IO bus. The full form of PCI is peripheral component interconnect. This PCI bus can also be called as the IO bus because it is dedicated to have or to establish a communication between the system and the IO devices. This is my monitor on which the display will take place. So it is getting connected with the PCI bus through a controller known as the display or graphics controller. Here we are having the SCSI controller. The full form of SCSI is small computer system interface. And it, with this particular SCSI controller, high speed hard disks are connected. So this particular SCSI controller will provide, will provide SCSI bus. And with this SCSI bus, these disks will remain connected. We are having another kind of disks. So that is the IDE disk controller, integrated device electronics. So with this particular IDE disk controller, we are having multiple number of disks connected with the local dedicated disk buses. So now here we are having this expansion bus interface. So here we can have more ports and with the help of the ports we can connect other peripheral devices. So like keyboard it has got connected. These ports can be mainly categorized. Ports can be categorized in two different heads. One is the parallel port, another one is the serial port. In case of serial port against each and every clock pulse, I shall be getting one bit at a time for the communication. In case of parallel port, we will be having multiple number of bits. Mainly one byte of information can be transferred against a single clock pulse. So this is the parallel port and this is the serial port. Expansion buses are there with the help of which we can connect other peripheral devices. So in this way, we have discussed this particular typical bus structure of a PC. Now see, in case of IO connections, we are having some IO hardware, we are having some IO devices and so on. So IO hardware is mainly having this uh, components. So one is the IO devices, obviously it will be having different IO devices that will be the part of the IO hardware. And there are some common concepts like port where the system will get connected with the peripheral device, a common interfacing point that is known as a port. We are having different kinds of buses. We know that we have here we have shown that the PCI bus and other SCSI bus and so on. And we are having controllers. With the help of controllers, we can do the communication between the system and the buses. The controller will produce different control signals to decide what will be the usage of the bus. This bus can be can have contention that means more than one IO devices may be demanding this particular bus. So that is why this bus contention may take place 
and this bus contention will be resolved by a technique known as bus arbitration. This bus arbitration will be controlled by bus controller or bus arbitrator. There are three different methods with the help of which this bus arbitration can be done. One is the daisy chaining arbitration, another one is the polling, another one is the independent requesting. Daisy chaining arb arbitration means in this case the module wise will get the permission at a time. The first module will get the permission to do or to access the buses. If the module is ready to access the bus, it will access it. Otherwise, the bus grant or this permission signal will be transferred to the next module. Then it will be transferred to the next module. In this way, it will proceed. So that is known as the daisy chaining arbitration. So other arbitration techniques are polling and independent requesting. So we are having IO instruction control devices. So there will be some device which device will do a communication between the CPU and the respective IO ports. So also they are known as programmable interfacing devices. So these particular devices will be having some ports connected and there are some control words with the help of which you can decide whether a port will be used as an input port or output port and whether what are the different control signals are to be initiated and all these things will be guided by this IO instructions control devices and device addresses can be two types. Actually one IO device can get mapped with the system in two different ways. One is known as the direct IO instructions also known as IO mapped IO and another one is the memory mapped IO. So another one is the memory mapped IO. So what is the IO mapped IO and memory mapped IO? In case of IO mapped IO there will be some dedicated instructions are there with the help of which the communication will be established. These dedicated instructions might be in or out with the help of which we can do the communication with the IO devices and there will be some dedicated IO control signals say IO read or IO write will be used to establish the communication with the IO devices. So that is known as direct IO instructions. So in this case we will be having dedicated instructions and dedicated control signals. In case of memory mapped IO, all those instructions which are being used for the memory read or memory write operations, all the control signals which will be used for the memory read or memory write operations will be utilized for the IO read and IO write operations. So that means here each and every memory location, some of the memory locations will be replaced by the IO devices. And what about the control signals, what are the instructions we were supposed to use to access those memory locations, now they will be used to do the communication with the IO devices and that is why it is called memory mapped IO. These IO devices can be categorized mainly into four heads. One is the storage devices like your disk or tapes and all these storage devices are of the type block oriented device. Transmission devices like your network card modem. So, it will be So all these uh, transmission devices are like network card or modem. Say human interface devices like your screen, the output device, there is a keyboard that is the input device and the mouse that is also the input device and specialized devices like your joystick. So in this way, this IO devices can get categorized mainly into broad categories. We are having the device controller. Device controller, I have mentioned two features. One is the IO units typically consists of a mechanical component that is the device itself. Say one storage device hard disk, there are so many mechanical components are there residing within the hard disk and they will play the wider role for the read and write operations. And another one is the electronic component, it might be a, an adapter or a controller which will establish a communication between the system and the IO device and low level interface between controller and the device. So controller and the device will be the low level interface. Low level interface means the controller will issue certain control commands which operating system may not interpret but those that very particular device will be knowing what is the meaning of those commands. So only controller can issue those commands to the respective devices. So that is a low level interface between the controller and the device. We are having the IO controller can be categorized into three heads whatever I have mentioned here. One is the DIX controller. So that is a DIX side protocol. So that means this DISC controller can 
detect whether the data transmission has been completed or not, can detect errors, can do the buffering, can do the prefetching. That means if I know that next data is going to be read from that very track and sector, from that very block, so I can prefetch that amount of data within the buffer space so that whenever it will be required, it can get supplied. So that is why Dix site protocol can detect whether any error has occurred or not, can do the buffering, can do the prefetching and caching. Controller has registers for data and control. So controller itself will have some registers dedicated to hold some data or to have some control words. CPU and controllers communicate via IO instructions and registers or memory mapped IO, whatever we have discussed a uh, little bit here. So IO instructions and registers we know, I have told you that two uh, such instructions are in instruction and out instruction. In case of memory mapped IO, the instructions can be memory read or memory write. So now we are having this IO ports. Memory map may, uh, some instructions like be your LDA, STS, stored accumulator, load accumulator type of instructions might be there. So using the same instruction I can do the read write from the memory using the same instruction here I will be doing the read write from the IO devices. So IO ports mainly is having four kinds of registers. One is the status, next one is the control, next one is the data in and next one is the data out. So I have written a single line for each one of them for the further explanation. So status means it states whether the current command is completed, whether byte is available, any error has occurred or not. So that is known as the status signal. Next one is the control. Host determines to start a command or to change the mode of the device. So that will be done by the control. So that means whether the device initially was in the read mode, should I change it to the write mode? So these particular things will be done in the control ports. And this control ports mode can be changed using control word where each and every bit in the control word will have some dedicated purpose. Say if one bit is 0, let us suppose if there is a particular bit is 0 then that indicates the port will be selected in the read mode. If the bit is 1 then the port will be selected in the write mode. In this way the port can the uh, control bits can operate. Data in host, host reads to get input, data out host writes to send output. So in this way through the ports the data in and data out may take place. Typical size of register, these registers are 1 to 4 bytes obviously that will depend upon the particular uh, IO ports. So in this way the things are taking shape. So in this particular lecture we have discussed what is the input output, what is the basic block diagram and other important features. In the next video we will be discussing some other topics on this input output. Please watch them. Thanks for watching this video.